Arsenal looking to hijack the Nico Williams situation. Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Nico Williams is probably a name that you've heard a lot more about this summer than you probably have beforehand. We always, we always knew about him. We always knew how well he's done at Athletic Bilbao. But of course, the summer Euros with Spain winning the European Championship, with him being a big cog in that machine has obviously risen his profile by quite a significant uh, degree by all things considered and with all due respect. But despite the fact that he has been an ever-present figure for Athletic Bilbao, it seems that there is a lot of speculation surrounding him in regards to his future, with a lot of top clubs from around Europe interested in taking him in this transfer window. We're going to be looking at the Nico Williams situation. We're going to be looking at what this guy possesses and why Arsenal are their latest to be strongly linked with his name and are looking to hijack the deal away from Barcelona. But without further ado, we'd like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both of them are always and forever greatly appreciated. Get involved in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think and feel. Your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure we'll make for great and interesting reading down below. So please do talk to me on this, people. Use and abuse that comment section at your will. I'd love to know what you guys think and feel on Nico Williams and where his footballing future may lie. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's talk Nico Williams. Let's talk Arsenal and everything else in between. So the situation goes is that Nico Williams is highly thought of, highly rated this summer. He is 22 years of age. He's currently playing his trade at Athletic Bilbao. And it seems that there is a lot of speculation mounting on him that he's going to be moving away from Bilbao this summer. There are quite a few interested parties, it seems. The strongest link seems to be Barcelona. That is seemingly where... Uh, a lot of people seemingly think he's going to be going. Barcelona is a team that I that everybody seems to think and it's reported to believe that Nico Williams wants to go to. He's got his heart seemingly set on Barcelona. But of course, Barcelona themselves might not be able to fund this deal. There are, there's, there's talk about the financial situation that we know Barcelona find themselves in. They may not have enough money to fund the deal. They may not have enough to, to, to get this deal over the finish line and come to fruition. And even though he obviously may have his heart set on a move to Barcelona, it could trigger the alert of other teams that are seemingly interested that Barcelona may not be in the best financial position to fund this move. He may have his heart set on it. We've seen time and time again players that have their heart set on a preferred move sometimes get let down. You only have to look as far as yesterday, of course, with Lenny Yoro. He wanted to go to Real Madrid, of course. Real Madrid didn't match the bid that Lille wanted. He was, well, depending on who you believe in the certain reports, some would say he was forced. Or some will say he turned his head towards Manchester United of his own accord. Depending on which side of the story you want to believe, of course. But Nico Williams is certainly someone who will have no shortage of options if Barcelona do come calling or not. There is talk from Fabrizio Romano that Barcelona are in negotiations with Bilbao as we speak. Um, so things are seemingly moving there. But there are other teams that are circulating around this deal, keeping it on their radar. The likes of Chelsea and Arsenal, of course, are seemingly the latest to be linked. There is also the rather interesting but rather ambitious Aston Villa story, which is developing out of this, which they could be interested in taking Williams on, which would be very interesting and very ambitious, to say the least. Plus, when you think about the way that they are obviously selling Moussa Diaby, um... You know, they'll obviously have a lot of money to play with and they'll obviously have a big gap to fill. Williams could fill that gap. But even though they do have Champions League football, is it quite as enticing as committing your entire future to Chelsea for the next six, seven, eight years, whatever stupid contract they offer? Uh, and of course, having a lot of money to that for the next however many years and having a job set for life, for, well, for the, for, the, for the long duration of your career. Or is it enticing as Arsenal, who of course under a massive project under Mikel Arteta are in a very good position to be challenging for the major honours, not just in terms of domestically, but in terms of maybe starting to get there towards European success as well. 
there's a lot there to, to be considered for Ni- for Nico Williams. Like I say, I think his main preferred move is Barcelona, but just in case Barcelona don't go the preferred way, Arsenal could certainly be that ticket. Now, a lot of people will say, well, what about Gabriel Martinelli? I think it was clear this season that Martinelli somewhat fell down the pecking order to Leandro Trossard. Trossard scores some important goals at times. Does he maybe offer the best natural balance on that side? Maybe not. But at the same time, you can still see the usefulness of Trossard, of his versatility, his goal scoring, um, his goal scoring ability, and of course his overall playmaking and obviously set pieces. So there is obviously good points to him. I love Gabriel Martinelli. I had them for a number of years. I think he's skillful. I think he's pacey. I think this season, I think he found it, or this past season, I should say, he's found it difficult. Um, and I think he kind of lost his place, like I say, to Trossard. Ha- bringing in Nico Williams will obviously offer more competition, but he's versatile himself. He can play on either wing, naturally, predominantly on the left, of course. But if you need him to fill in elsewhere, of course, he can do. Um, and as well as that, he'll offer more natural balance right foot to play on the left wing cuts inside he's skillful he's pacey he's got plenty of flair creativity we saw that plenty for bill bow down the years and we obviously saw it a lot during the euros for spain he was one of the he had a brilliant euros he had a brilliant tournament he was one of the most fantastic players at that tournament and of course he was one of the most consistent players at the tournament the, the partnership he had with Lamine Yamal and Nico Williams uh, uh, obviously was one of the best partnerships at that tournament. Um, and, you know, partly maybe why Barcelona are so interested in taking him. The, the fact of, um, you know, reuniting on a club front those two players in particular. So, yeah, um, th- there's a lot there's a lot there for Barcelona to obviously look at and to obviously look at with this player. There's a lot there for Arsenal to look at with this player. Um I, I just really like this guy. And of course, even my club were involved in uh, some stage of being talked about as being interested. But the talk has seemingly died down there, typically. Um, but no, uh, look, the Aston Villa thing is very ambitious and very exciting. But I don't think he'll be going there. Chelsea, I think, are in chaos. Plus, maybe the wages that are being talked about may be out of the reach of Chelsea if they're not willing to pay the same wages for, like, Michael Elise, for example. Arsenal would be a preferred uh, choice, I believe, over Chelsea anyway. Um, Champions League football, of course, being the major pull that Arsenal have, of course, which would be great. They also have the better squad. They're better set up for the present and the future rather than just we may have something in line for the future rather than the here and now. So that may also appeal to to Williams as well. Um, But for me, obviously Barcelona is the main one. And I think him staying in Spain, being close to friends, being close to family is obviously, it it may, may also go hand in hand with that. Um, Barcelona, despite the fact that they haven't been in the best possible way for a number of years, both financially and on the pitch, even though they have obviously won a La Liga title during that time, um, is obviously something that he may look beyond because it's the name, it's Barcelona, it's one of the biggest clubs in the world, it's the second biggest club in in Spain, if you want to obviously go that far. Um, So... Yeah, uh, uh, as phenomenal as what Barcelona would be, if they're obviously not going to offer the financial package to both club and player that the player desires and that the club desires, it will obviously open the door for someone else to swoop in and take him from their grasp. Maybe a Chelsea, maybe an Aston Villa more ambitiously, or most definitely an Arsenal who should be all over this deal. Um... I'm not saying it as a threat to Martinelli, but the competition will do him some good. Competition will do some will do some good for Trossard as well. Um, I still think there are other areas that Arsenal need to address. Mainly, I think striker. You could also look at maybe that midfield area. I know they're looking at Mikel Marino, um, but obviously the number six or number eight, depending on where they're deciding to play Declan Rice, is obviously something that I think needs to be addressed by the club. 
And maybe you could look a bit more defensively as well at the fullback situation. Mainly the left side, but I think also maybe the right hand side as well. I don't think it's as na uh, as big a priority um, as maybe the other places that I've that I've mentioned. But certainly the left back situation could could probably be addressed. The right back situation could be looked at as well and gone. You know what? Maybe we could be on the lookout for an upgrade on Ben White, but for right now, it's it's solid enough, so we're sort of okay with it. Um, but yeah, th there is certainly some things of, of Arsenal that need to be addressed, need to be looked at. Um, but at the same time, if you can get a player that is going to be somewhat of an upgrade or somewhat of a uh, certain level of competition for your mainstay players that are going to be in your not set in stone starting 11 but pretty much there set in uh, pretty much there um hardening concrete shall we say uh, starting 11 um nico williams should certainly be that guy and like i say you you don't just judge a player off of an international tournament i say this time and time you don't just judge a player off of an international tournament um, because they can often be deceiving on an international front. We know how different international football is to club football, but he did have a very good competition and he did have a very good tournament. Um, very consistent, very good, very exciting prospect and talent for the for the here and now as well as the future. Um, but we've seen that time and time again for Bilbao. So going to be interesting to see where this one does go. Like I say, my if I was to put money on it. I think Barcelona do manage to pull the money out of somewhere. And I do think they negotiate something with Bilbao. That obviously means that they that Bilbao may get something in return. Um, may not just be money. It might, might just be a player exchange as well. Um, so, yes. Obviously, watch this space on this one. This one could be very interesting. For me, I think he does go Barcelona. But if you're Arsenal, you do want to keep tabs on this. Because, like I say... Look at uh, Lenny Yoro. Look at Lenny Yoro yesterday. Everyone was expecting him to go to Real Madrid. Real Madrid didn't come calling for him. They couldn't match the bid of Lille and Manchester United, who put all the work in, all the groundwork in, managed to managed to prosper from that deal. They chucked their hat into the ring. They weren't fear. They weren't fearing rejection or anything like that. They just chucked their hat into the ring and said, "Look, if they're not going to offer you." Or the club, what they, what, what the club sees fit, or what you see fit, we will do it, and that's exactly what United did. That's why they got their player. That's why they got their target. Arsenal could do the same if Barcelona are to slip up on this. So there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, there's a, there's a lot obviously to work with with this guy for the here and now as well as the future. He can still continue to grow and evolve his game. But if you're looking for someone with natural balance on that left-hand side, with skill, flair, trickery, creativity, pace, this guy is your man. And I think that he would fit in so well with Arsenal um, in, in terms of that aspect. Could be good for a counter-attacking uh, for, for counter prospect. Could be good for build, overall build-up play. Likes to link up play well. Likes to roam from that left-hand side. It could very well work out for Arsenal if they were to get him. But I think a lot does rely on whether or not Barcelona are going to find the funds to be able to sign him. Look, those are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever to call it. This guy, I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of this whole Nico Williams saga? What do you make of him as a player? What do you make of him overall? And what do you make of him where his footballing future may lie? Will it be with Barcelona, as does seem to be the favourites to sign him? Or will it be with the likes of Arsenal or Chelsea? Maybe an Aston Villa, maybe an outsider in Liverpool comes in for him at the 11th hour. I'd love to know what you guys think and feel on this uh, down below in the comment section. Use and abuse that comment section. Let me know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it on this potential transfer story. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way out. If you enjoy the video, subscribe if you want new. want to see more kind of like content like this. Both things are always and forever greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see you speak to you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Speak to you all again very, very soon.